fashion, as it always has been, is used here as a, as a type of armour. This is the Armada portrait of Elizabeth I. And this is Eunice Olamidi. I suppose when I look into her eyes, what I'm actually thinking is how much of what we're seeing is real. This very ostentatious beauty, something that is completely unobtainable, which is just like, I suppose, being a catwalk model and walking down the runway in the most elaborate ensembles, the most elaborate couture and clothing that most people could never buy. Just like today, these costly outfits were status symbols with fabrics and jewels from all over the world. We know how incredibly difficult it is to get just one single pearl with divers maybe having to dive 40 or so times just to find one. As somebody who works in sustainability, what's really interesting here is what is the process behind acquiring such luxury and how that actually affects the real world? That's what kind of brings this picture into the 21st century because we are still literally dealing with the exact same issues. Elizabeth is depicted with her hand on a globe, her finger pointing towards America. Sir Walter Raleigh had tried to establish England's first colony there in 1585, and for the Tudors, the message was clear. They had ambitions to look beyond Europe to a global empire. Whenever you look at a portrait, particularly a portrait or painting about British aristocrats and royals, I personally don't see anything uncomfortable in them, but I can imagine that for many British people and for their families, that it could certainly be extremely uncomfortable looking at these images. Particularly now in the future, will we really understand the impact of the transatlantic slave trade, colonialism? As a British person, most of us don't think to themselves, why is it that everyone speaks English everywhere we go? One iconic image, three unique versions. See the Armada portraits of Elizabeth I together for the very first time.